All right, now recording's in progress. Mm -hmm. All right, so we created this query where we want to just be able to identify the number of instances of a particular label, in this case, bot, on all of the repositories in an organization or in a database. So one thing I can do with my tool is I can beautify the SQL. Sometimes that's useful for reading it later. Mm -hmm. Right. And then I can copy it over to here. Now, under the root of your Augur directory in the Augur new branch, there is um, a directory called Augur. And underneath that directory is a directory called API. API has two primary subfolders, metrics and routes. Metrics mm -hmm. are what we call standard metrics. Standard metrics are characterized by a couple of factors. First of all, the headers are all the same in terms of what they import. Uh -huh. Se second, for each metric, there's this register metric decorator at the top of it. And let me do the word wrap. And each of the method signatures. So this is the name of the metric. And each of the method signatures takes a repo ID, a repo, a repo group ID, or a repo ID. Um, uh, a begin date, an end date, and a periodic time, which can be, as it says down here in the documentation, it can be day, week, month, or year. Yes. All right. And, the, and then the, the final thing that's standard is if somebody does not set the date, then it defaults to the beginning of time as far as computers are concerned which is uh, January 1st, 1970. And it ends at the moment that you're running the query. So basically all the time. Uh, usually we set the val variable that we're going to assign to the SQL text equal to nothing. And then there's a if block. So if a repo ID is passed, um, we just execute that block. So if, you, if somebody were to pass, pass both uh, a repo ID or a repo, which is impossible, actually. Uh, it would only execute the repo ID. Um, and then, so for the repo ID SQL, we have this. And you can see that typically the period, so we use this date trunk function. So whatever period is passed, if it's the default of month, then that's what's passed. Um, it groups everything by month mm -hmm. and then the begin date and the end date parameters are assigned down in here and the repo id parameter is assigned here and then we do the appropriate group buys um etc and then the else is simply in the case where a repo group id is assigned and it's very similar sql and then finally, the results are constructed using um, pandas read SQL, passing the SQL text, the database engine, any parameters that were assigned, which you know you, these should look familiar from the method signature, and then it returns the results. So in practice, the way that the way that that works is it also creates um a very standard easy to remember way for developers to access the api so first of all our api prefix is api unstable uh when you go there it will always give you that hey i'm alive and then repos if you're doing a repos metric so if you just type repos, you'll get a list of all of the repos. And then if we type the metric name, which in this case is committers, 
um, you put in a repo ID. So from this list of repo IDs, you know, the sort of normal application flow would be you'd get a list of repo IDs, and then those repo IDs or repo group IDs would be passed to subsequent endpoint calls. So in this case, I'm just going to do 25440, which is auger and committers. And so that was that's the metric that we were just looking at. And that exact pattern is what gets followed um, when you're accessing a standard metric. Effectively, it's repos or repo groups, the repo or repo group number, and the name of the metric. And we achieve that consistency by having this register metric function in the standard metric. Standard metrics also share the property of always producing time series data. So whatever your periodic periodicity choice is, whether it's day, week, month, or year, uh, it will give you a time series uh, data set for all of that, which of course lends itself well to graphing and, and trend analysis. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, we heard like, I wanted to ask like, uh, we have a date parameter to be seen over here. So it's like uh, specifically on that date, we have these many committers. Is that what the metric overall means? Yes. Yes. So for the week of, for example, uh, June 30th, 2022, six different people made commits. For the week of, or I'm sorry, the month of March 2022, 26 people made commits. Right. Got it. And so these are just the round of, these are commits that end up, of course, in the things. main branch. Oh, got it. So these are the unique committers. Uh, yes. We are looking at. Yes. Okay. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Got it. Got it. So these are the, the the one that we talked about is actually a a, a, a like what what did he call it as a metric? It's called a standard metric, and, and standard, the distinction yeah. is that it's in the met. So under Augur API metrics, it's under the metrics folder. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Uh, there is another kind of metric where I think the query that we created would <laughs> would fit, um, and that is. Um, Routes. Routes. So routes, routes do not require input parameters, although they can take them. Routes do mm -hmm. not necessarily, and I think most in most cases do not um, take uh, rep uh, date time parameters. Oftentimes they're used to summarize things. So you can create like one that took a date time parameter, like in the case of this query. Um, I might add a date time to it, which would probably be smart. Um, Or probably we can add a parameter for the label that we are selecting. Yeah, exactly. Not yeah, I would create a parameter for the label. I would probably create a a date. And the question is: Is the purpose of this to look at it for a repo, or is it to look at it for all of the repos in a collection? Mm -hmm. You know, we'd have to define that. Uh, yeah, right. Probably we can do it for both. If we kind yeah. of want to do that. Yeah, so we would develop that all out, uh, put those parameters in. And in this case, I would add it. I would like take the config, just take any, uh, let's see, metadata is probably a good one. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And, and basically, so the, the non-standard metric in the routes folder, it also has a different set of imports and an Augur API version that gets, gets declared. This gets, this gets declared here because uh, it's handled by the decorator and standard metrics. And the other thing that's handled by the decorator and standard metrics is this uh, definition uh, create route server. So essentially this top piece is all unindented and then every metric that you add, every route that you add gets an indentation in, mm -hmm. in a non-standard metric. And it begins with declar declaring at server.app.route this parentheses here gives you the API unstable prefix and then metadata repo info. Have to do word wrap there as well. Um, and then it does uh, methods get, which when you're retrieving data um, is, is all, you, all you need to do um, is a get method. And then you define uh, in the next line the name of of the metric and the the text. And so here we're not even um, doing a data collection date. I don't think there's any parameters. It's just giving you a repo info for all of the repos inside of an instance. <clears throat> So there, it's it's actually pretty simple to create either a standard metric or a route when you have that query. Um, once you have a query of something that you want to parameterize, um, and certainly, like if you wanted to do date, if you wanted to add date functions to this query, which I'll put in the Zoom chat here. Um, if you wanted to create a uh, endpoint for that query, you could parameterize the name of na name of the um, tag, and you could also add in some of the date logic that exists in the standard metrics, and you could th that would probably be as far as you would want to go. Um, okay. It's basically like a, a combination of some things. Like if you want to do it by date, or we really don't want to do it by date, we just want to do it by yeah. the name of the label. So I was, yeah, I would say if it's if it's by date and there's some periodicity to it, like you want it by day, week, month, I would follow the standard metric route. If okay. um if the date windows don't matter, and I think in this case they probably do, because I'd want to see the the growth and decline in the use of different um uh, labels right yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah okay so basically like um, this particular thing that we discussed presently is not actually a route no now. there there's no api endpoint for for the bout labels yet okay So probably that can be a contribution. Oh yeah, that'd be a great, that'd be a great contribution. I think uh, people would be real interested in seeing a bot label endpoint. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or any any label endpoint if they want to exactly see that. Or yeah. probably we can have something like uh, um, you know it retrieves for all the labels, like the counts for all the labels uh, for a repo group and a repo ID, um, to like something mm, plot it up. To exactly see which label is being used the most yeah uh, yeah right. there, there's there is one other step uh which is a little annoying because it's another step but um under the rest if you create an endpoint um there's a very large file but it does follow a pattern under docs source rest api so for um, effectively the tags will identify where in the API it goes 
Um, but these are for each of these endpoints. Um, you basically provide a description, um, an operation ID, and the parameters, and then the responses. But this follows a very, very um, clear structure. So you could just copy and paste one of these and then mm -hmm. fill it in with your values. Um, obviously, the, the API doesn't exist for most people if it's not documented. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. I get it. Um, yeah. And we do have, um, there's also tests. So test metrics, test routes. Um, and you could just, uh, if you did a pull request without writing the test right now, that would be okay. Um, we could write the test for you. Uh, it's preferable if you do write the test. There is a pattern there, um, yes. and they do run. So, but there's a, because this is a data driven system, I am not entirely positive what data needs to or not needs to, doesn't need to be in the database. We're trying to write the tests so that they work without whether or not there's data in the database, like it'll spoof the data. Um, so, but I don't know if Andrew is finished with that yet. So if you wanted to skip the test for now, you could, and we'll just write that later. Yeah, I'm getting a point like, uh, um, we have an SQL query in, a, in the function. And if we actually kind of, uh, call that function for a test it will require the database yeah mm -hmm. got it yeah mm -hmm. okay okay then maybe like uh, i'll look into this contribution uh, yeah actually in the past few days i've been looking out what exactly can be a potential route to have so this was one of the things that i came across yeah uh, no, this would so be a great route mm -hmm. and uh, there's one thing uh, more uh, on my mind if uh, on the basis of like when we are deciding on newcomers like uh, we do have something uh, which i went through like uh, probably you know if there's a contributor who did more than two commits or something like that um, yeah yeah uh, like yeah in a month if a new contributor does uh, more than two commits then we consider him as a like, we do, so we have endpoints for that mm -hmm. um but um those endpoints are non-standard metrics, they're routes, and they're characterized by the word reports. And the reports uh, endpoints are unique or different than the others because they return um, images. Like they return actually a visualized graph instead of raw JSON. Okay, got it. So, so it's a... You can get the data, but it's already visualized. I, I believe one of, I, there may be, a, I know Andrew mentioned he was going to make it so that you could pull the JSON from those. Um, I can ask him really quick in Discord if, uh, I just asked him if we ever did that. I um, it was something he mentioned a few months ago. Knowing Andrew, he it depends what else I asked him to do, but he may or may not. If 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 he he may have done it, but I just don't know the ins and outs of of, uh, of calling it yet. Okay. Okay. Might be in the documentation. Probably we need to actually make a lot of updates to the documentation uh, because like everything has changed. Uh, we don't have workers in the new release. Yeah, 
Yeah, no, there needs to be some updates to the docs. That's uh, on my list of things to do today. <laughs> or this week during the holiday. Uh, so we'll be continuing with development in December month, right? We'll be continuing uh, with what? With development in August. Or is it like... Oh, yeah, yeah. I, uh, the the may, you know the developers that I pay will be less active starting next week because they'll have the last two weeks of courses and then exams, um, and then most of them will take the holiday. They'll take some time off uh, before the holidays, but they'll work. You know, either they'll start. They'll work starting the last week of the year. Uh, th you know, so they'll work three or four weeks, pretty much full time. Then after that, but yeah, there'll be a three or four weeks of um, much less activity, uh, which is one of the reasons I'm trying to get you know this release out. Okay, okay. So if like I wanted to ask certain doubts, I can ping you on Slack, probably. Yeah, yeah, I'll be active. I'll be active the whole time because I don't have exams. I give exams. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so. Well, actually, for my case, it's like uh, I'm already going through my exams presently. And uh, December is something like when I mean, we are really free. So, you know, for having open source contributions, I guess December is something. Yeah. Uh, it's the month when we can really make it. Yeah, and I'll have these at the normal time at 9 a.m. on. Um, and that, like, uh, I have it uh, scheduled for next week. I don't know why it's not showing up on my calendar, but. But yeah, I have it scheduled for next week. So yeah, it'll be, I'll have it next week. Okay. Um, oops. And then, uh, let's see. Wait a minute. I'll edit it. I'll just edit it so that it goes. Okay. Yeah, so I'll have it every week and every Monday in December at 9 a.m. Okay, well, that's, that's really nice. I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it'll be every Monday at uh, 9 a.m. Through through December and the first week of January, so okay. that should help. Yeah, I'll always be there. I am really committed to working on this tool. Uh, let's see how can I improve it. Uh, plus, I wanted to ask me like, what in the tool is exactly taking the time. Uh, when you say that, you know, uh, no, when takes, you say that, you know, you prefer, yeah, what takes time? Exactly. Yeah, so the the data collection takes the most time. It takes about three percent or less of the time that it used to take because we're using a multi-threaded queuing system, so we can send out a gigantic number of jobs all at once. The timeouts that we're having to put in are actually because we're hitting the database too fast, too often. Um, you know, very rarely we'll get a GitHub timeout, but no more or less than we were getting um, in the old version. Uh, principally, we're just pounding the database so hard because we're inserting data so fast. Um, and so, yeah, it just, it collects data like, way faster than it used to 
Um, so that's, that's the biggest advantage and that you really would only notice it if you were collecting more than like 3000 or 4000 repositories, um, because that's where you go from days to weeks um, in the old version of Augur. And now we've gotten all the data for 12,000 repositories in a week, which is pretty phenomenal, honestly. Um, because it's uh, not just collected, but it's also validated and structured in a relational style that people can use. So, um, right. you know, there's a lot going on behind the scenes. <laughs> so now the, the main thing, installation, I guess last time we uh, skipped that section. Yeah, yeah, we did. We did. I, I need to make a video for installation so that we don't have to, because I've, I've got to set up a machine. I decided I'm going to do a video. I meant to do it uh, last week, but I'll do it this week so that, uh, okay. and, I, and I'll promote it. I'm trying to, to, to time it with the release and then use a, uh, a bear Ubuntu server on Amazon to do the installation so that you can see all the steps and I can edit it. And, um, so, mm -hmm. and I'll, yeah, so right, right now I would say, I want, I want to make sure that the installation is perfectly stable before I do the demo, but in, you know, the installation instructions, uh, that you would follow for, um, the, the current version of Augur are still valid for, Augur new. Okay. So you'll you'll get fewer prompts, and that's about it. Mm -hmm. But the process of starting Augur is exactly the same. So all of um, okay. that there, I guess there's one dependency in that you need to have Redis installed on your computer on the computer you're installing it to, because we use Redis for persisting a queue right um but and we don't that, need go programming language yeah but that gets installed automatically okay in this version because in previous version it was throwing a problem that you know you need to have go already installed yeah and auger and, really, uh, and, well well that's one of the reasons i need to uh do the dry run on an ec2 instance but yeah auger Augur is supposed to install it now. I've seen it install it. I think the challenge is if, because I install it so much, that's why I want to do it on a bare server so I don't, so that I catch everything that any new person would catch. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, because in the first time I was doing the setup, I ran into that issue. Like, yeah. You know, it's again and again, so it's saying like, that. I believe that I've fixed that in Augur new. Okay. I know I fixed the, there were some issues with the score, the OSSF scorecard, um, because they change their code so often, but I fixed that. Mm. Okay. Uh, yeah. So probably for installation, it's like, uh, you'll give out that video. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'll do that probably tomorrow. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's, that's fine. Yeah. And probably like, there's just one last thing that I wanted to ask. Yeah. Um, is that uh, the, the machine learning workers that we have already? Are they using TensorFlow anyway? Yes. Yeah. In uh, the message insights worker uses TensorFlow. And um, yeah, the message insights worker is the one that's using TensorFlow. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, the message insights is probably uh, what is it doing exactly? Like we uh, it's, um, are trying to kind of it's identifying um, 
sentiment using a, a more sophisticated than it's not a bag of words strategy. Uh, it's a more sophisticated uh, machine learning strategy that in, takes into account that certain words like bug and defect are not valenced negatively in Negative. software engineering. Um, and it's also discerning message novelty. So if if there's a message or group of messages that are kind of uh, noticeably different than other messages in a repo, those can get flagged as well. Just to make sure they're not spam, mostly, or to determine that perhaps they are identifying some completely new thing. But messages that fall out of a normal band would, would be ones that uh, a maintainer would want to pay more, you know, give special attention to just to see. <laughs> right. Okay. And, um, and this, uh, like, whenever I want to add, uh, like, add a route to be specific, or, like, I have an idea whenever, like, in future as well. Like, presently, we've discussed one of them, but uh, if I have to add a route, so, like, what's the process? I should open an issue with uh, the entire description and get it approved, or, like, I should ping you on Slack um, discuss it and then uh, you know raise it together. so if, if if the route is is not already in existence and it either uh fits a metric or is obviously useful as in the case of the bot metric then my recommendation would be to go ahead and build the metric and issue a pull request okay <laughs> You know, and then if, if, you know, if there's questions, then we can have the discussion in the pull request review, which I, I find to be more, both more efficient and uh, more fun than trying to negotiate all of the details in advance, if right. you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That actually ends up all my doubts, I guess. That's, yeah, that's and of course, thing. you're you're welcome to open an issue, and and you may get some comments that are helpful. So I wouldn't, you know, I don't discourage you from opening an issue, but I would also say don't like wait for the issue to fully resolve all of your questions um, before uh -huh. just building the metric. You know, we'll do the best we can, but sometimes. Uh, talking about things abstractly is more difficult than uh, just looking at the code. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. Uh, the rest of things actually follow specific patterns, so it's anyway very intuitive to pick it up. Uh, like to add a worker as well. Like I was going through what exactly the pattern is, and. Um, even for the metric, there's there's a pattern that you already discussed. Yes. So, so that's very much clear. Yeah. The only yeah. thing is that uh, how do we decide? There like there is a core dot by I guess uh, along with the task. Uh, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. 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 So there's Isaac. Core I, yeah, oh. Isaac is Isaac was gonna provide an explanation of that. Um. And an example template, um, mm -hmm. uh, but I don't have that from him yet. So, Yeah, I just I just pinged him on that again. He's a, he's aware of it. He was on the call last week, but um, okay. this pat the last week was our last week before our hol our Thanksgiving holiday break here in the U.S. So I think a lot of professors uh, loaded their students down with tons of work. So um, okay, yeah, that's like very rarely used file, I guess. Uh, you know, very less metrics. They have that file to maintain that order, to have a code.py, but basically they don't have any code in it. So sometimes, yeah, sometimes there's code, sometimes there's not. And 
I need that explained. I need that explained to me because like I, 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 I'm sure I could deconstruct it, but unlike the API endpoints, which have been around for most of Augur's history, I don't have a good idea how I create a new data collection task and what the, because, because I know it's as patterned as API endpoints. And so there are just certain things like you need to know, of course, the GitHub API that you're calling and you need, but then thing, there's things that are already built like pagination, uh, token passing. So a, a lot of the work that you would have to do if you were writing it from scratch is already baked into Augur. So writing a task to collect data in Augur is, you know, five times as easy as, you know, writing a bare naked uh a you know github api call it's it's right. just uh i just need we just need to you and i both need that example so that we can do it <laughs> yeah uh-huh mm. okay. okay i guess so well then that the, the the route that we discussed today i guess i'll be i'll be working on that That'd be awesome. Thank you very much, Meet. Yeah. Uh, and uh, ping me on Slack if you have any questions. Otherwise, I'll be here every Monday for the next month uh, through the first week of January, and we can talk then. Yeah. Sure. I'm sorry for the last minute change of times. I just had my department chair decide that we were going to have a 9 a.m. meeting. Um, yeah for a task force that I've been assigned to. So I had to, I had to pivot. Yeah, no way. Yeah, no worries anyway. It's, it's actually better for India. Uh, if you see, yeah. Yeah. So, that yeah. kind of, uh, it's too late at night uh, for us, uh, eight o'clock uh, or nine o'clock at, at the US time. Oh, all right. Well, maybe I'll just make them all um, earlier than um, if that's maybe better. Like if you can, yeah. Have it at yeah. yeah, yeah, I can, uh, I can do that. I'll change them all to eight. Yeah. yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. yeah. Um, I will see you then, uh, maybe next week or via Slack or wherever. Thanks a lot, meet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks, Sean. Thanks. All for right. Talk to you later. Bye. Yeah. Bye.